Welcome to the complete story of Final Fantasy. The game that started it all and set the stage for much of what the series would grow up to become, especially in terms of how it emphasizes the story aspect of each game. To a modern audience, it might not seem like much, but back in 1987, Final Fantasy's story represented an ambitious attempt to convey a dramatically compelling narrative via the fledgling medium of video games. Originally released on the Nintendo Famicom, the game has since then been remade and re-released on several platforms, such as the original PlayStation, Game Boy Advance, and the PSP, in addition to being playable on PC and mobile. Now, the most recent iteration of this classic title comes as part of the Pixel Remaster series of remasters, and this dramatic retelling of the complete story of Final Fantasy will be based on that version of the game, in all its pixelated glory. Join me, fellow warriors of light, as we revisit the story, the tale, the legend of Final Fantasy. The world lies shrouded in darkness. The winds die, the seas rage, the earth decays. But the people believe in a prophecy, patiently awaiting its fulfillment. When darkness veils the world, four warriors of light shall come. After a long journey, four young travelers did at last appear, and in the hand of each, was clutched a crystal. Upon having arrived in the kingdom of Cornelia, the travelers seek an audience with the king. The king identifies them as the warriors the prophecy has foretold, and begs their aid to rescue his daughter Sarah, who is being held captive in the Chaos Shrine by Garland, a once loyal knight of his majesty's and the finest swordsman in all the kingdom. In return, the king promises to have the bridge to the north rebuilt, so that the heroes of legend can continue on their journey. The warriors of light find Garland nestled within the Chaos Shrine, as he plots to overthrow the kingdom by exchanging the princess's life for the crown. The warriors best Garland in battle, and accompany the princess back to the castle, so that she can show them her gratitude. Back in the throne room, the king proclaims that there can be no doubt regarding their identity and recites them the prophecy in its entirety, as it was foretold by the sage Lucan, telling them they must gather the shards of light or else darkness will consume all, and the four crystals will never shine again. The king tells them of a crystal to the north they must seek, but before the warriors are able to leave the throne room, Princess Sarah calls out to them and gifts them with a loot that has been entrusted to the princesses of Cornelia for many generations. Having spared no expense to aid the heroes, the bridge to the north has been completed post-haste, allowing the party to venture forth to fulfill their destiny. And so their quest began. As the four warriors of light, they felt overwhelmed by the great task destiny had placed before them. They did not even know the true significance of the four crystals they held in their hands. The crystals at once, long ago, held a light that shone so brilliantly. The time for their journey had come, the time to cast off the veil of darkness and bring the world once more into the light. Having set out on their long quest, the warriors encounter a witch named Matoya in a cave to the north. She complains about not being able to see without her crystal eye, but having no knowledge of her stolen eye, the warriors of light head east to the town of Provoka, only to find it plagued by pirates. They confront Bicke, the pirate captain, who has his pirate crew attack them in the streets. After they make short work of the pirates and put the captain in his place, Bicker promises to turn over a new leaf and presents the warrior with his ship as compensation for all the trouble he caused. 
Having obtained a ship of their own, the Warriors of Light set out for Alfheim, where they learn that the elven prince has been cursed to eternal slumber by Astos, king of the Dark Elves. Later, they discover that Astos is also guilty of tricking the king of the Western Keep, causing his castle to fall into ruin. However, the king claims that if they were to retrieve his crown from the Marsh Cave, he would be able to restore his castle to its former glory. The warriors journey to the cave and reclaim the stolen crown, but upon returning to the king, he lets out a sinister laugh and reveals himself to be none other than Astos himself, announcing that with the combined power of the crown and the crystal eye he already possesses, he will be able to become the true elf king. Thanks to the warriors, Astos' ambitions amount to naught as they slay him and claim the crystal eye for their own, promptly returning it to Matoya, who rewards them with a jolt tonic, a particularly prized potion of hers. Returning to Alfheim, the warriors offer the tonic to the sleeping prince, undoing the curse and freeing him from his five-year slumber. Recognizing them as the heroes of legend, the prince bestows upon them the mystic key, which has the power to open otherwise locked doors. Back in Cornelia Castle, the warriors use the mystic key to unlock the treasure and obtain nitro powder from a chest. Continuing their journey, the warriors visit Mount Duega, where they meet Smith, a dwarven blacksmith who dreams of crafting a magical sword with a legendary metal known as adamantite. But alas, having no means to obtain such a rare metal, his dreams must remain as such. Deeper in the cave, the warriors encounter another dwarf called Nerik, who uses the nitro powder to create a canal, allowing their ship passage out into the wider world. Just beyond the canal lies the desolate town of Melmond, which has been practically destroyed by vampires. In Melmond, the warriors learn of a wise man named Sadar, who lives on the southern tip of the continent, and meet Dr. Une, a scholar studying the ancient Lufenian language. In a cave near Melmond, the party encounters an immovable giant that blocks their way unless they appease him with a precious gem. Not having possession of such a stone, the warriors make their way to the Cavern of Earth, where they encounter the vampire responsible for the attack on Melmond, who claims that the Earth shall rot and that the Light Warriors cannot alter destiny. Upon defeating the vampire, the party finds a star ruby tucked away in a nearby chest, which they take back to the giant in exchange for passage through the cave. On the other side, they find Sadar the Wise, who presents them with the Earth Rod and tells them to use it behind the vampire's chamber in the Cavern of Earth. The Earth Rod reveals a passageway deeper down into the ground, where they find Lich, the Fiend of Earth, who admits to feeding on the power of the Earth. Once Lich is defeated, the once-dimmed Earth Crystal is returned to its original brilliance. Their next adventure takes the heroes to Crescent Lake, where they find the Circle of Sages. The Sages reveal that the power of the Four Element Crystals is being blocked by the Four Fiends of Chaos as they claim it for their own. In order to set things right, the Warriors of Light must journey to the Four Altars and defeat the Fiends. Among the Sages is Lucan, who had prophesied about the events that are now unfolding, and another Sage, who presents the heroes with a canoe that allows them to traverse rivers on their way to Mount Gulg, where the Fiend of Fire dwells. As they approach the Fire Crystal deep inside the volcano, 
they are attacked by Marilith, the fiend of fire. But once Marilith has been vanquished, the fire crystal regains its precious luster, just as happened with the earth crystal. Having heard of a valuable stone, the heroes head to the Cavern of Ice, where they acquire the Levis Stone, and upon bringing the stone to the Ryukan Desert to the south, the power of the stone raises an airship out from under the dunes, allowing them to reach the northern continent by air. Upon visiting the Cardia Islands, that stretch out between the two great continents to the north, the Warriors of Light enter a den of dragons, where they meet Bahamut, the king of the dragons. Bahamut bids them to prove their valor and bravery. So the heroes set out for the citadel of trials to the east, where they meet a sage who permits them to undergo the trials. Upon completing the trials, the party is awarded with a rat's tail, which they present to Bahamut as proof of their courage. Bahamut recognizes their token and bestows upon them an honor befitting their valor by granting them a class change. The warrior becomes a knight, the thief a ninja, the monk a master, the red mage a red wizard, the white mage a white wizard, and the black mage a black wizard. Having proven their worth, the warriors of light continue their quest. In Onrak, the heroes hear rumors of a caravan selling a curious item, and upon investigating further, the party finds a bottle containing a fairy. They purchase the bottle and free the fairy, returning her to her home in the town of Gaia. As a reward for their efforts, the fairy gives them some oxy ale from the bottom of the spring where she lives. Using the oxy ale, which allows them to breathe underwater, the heroes are able to ride in a barrel down to the sunken shrine, where they find the Rosetta Stone and Kraken, the Fiend of Water, which they cut down just like they had the Fiends of Earth and Fire. Now in search of the last crystal, the Warriors of Light visit the town of Lufenia, but are unable to understand their language. In order to mend this malady, they take the Rosetta Stone to Dr. Une in Melmond, who uses it to decipher the Lufenian language. Then, on their second visit to Lufenia, the party is able to understand their words, thanks to a lesson from the good doctor. The Lufenians tell them that they are the descendants of a race that once lived among the clouds, the Sky People. The airship the party has been using being an artifact built by their ancestors. One of the Lufians presents the party with a chime that grants them the access to the Mirage Tower. And inside the tower, they come upon a portal to the Flying Fortress. They come upon an observation window that looks out upon the world from above. Looking out through the window, they see the four forces of fire, earth, water and wind appearing as mist and converging on a single point, namely the Chaos Shrine. On their way to the altar, the party happens upon a piece of adamantite before engaging Tiamat, the Fiend of Wind. Having bested Tiamat, the last of the four crystals regains its splendor and the heroes return to the surface below. Having vanquished the four fiends, and revivified the crystals, the Warriors of Light revisit the Circle of Sages to tell them of their deeds. The Sages congratulate the Warriors, but tell them that the root of all these disturbances is a time loop, and that the answer to make things right lies 2,000 years in the past. To uproot the problem, the Sages task the Warriors with returning to the Chaos Shrine where they will be able to travel back in time and break the cycle. Before venturing back into the Chaos Shrine where it all began, the warriors pay a visit to Mount Duerga, where the master blacksmith uses the adamantite to craft a legendary blade, Excalibur. Armed with a new weapon, the warriors re-enter the shrine 
and focused the light of their four shining crystals of earth, fire, water and wind on the black crystal in the room where they had previously rescued Princess Sarah. The flow of time surges and space begins to warp, taking them 2,000 years into the past. Proceeding through the Chaos Shrine of Antiquity, they come across a stone slab, and upon playing the lute entrusted to them by Princess Sarah, a secret passageway opens up, allowing them to venture deeper into the shrine. Along the way, they encounter each of the four fiends. Lich, the fiend of earth, Marilith, the fiend of fire, Kraken, the fiend of water, and Tiamat, the fiend of wind. Once their past incarnations are defeated, and the warriors reach the heart of the shrine, they are greeted by Garland, the knight who they had defeated 2,000 years in the future. Garland explains that after having been defeated, the four great forces saved him by sending him back through time, which allowed him to send the four fiends into the future, where they could once again use their powers to send him into the past, effectively creating a time loop that lets him live forever. Garland takes on the form of chaos and challenges the warriors of light to one final battle. Once the Warriors of Light emerge victorious, the time loop is severed at last. The endless struggle that raged over 2,000 years had ended, and peace prevailed once more. The light of the Four Crystals restored the forces of wind, water, earth and fire. It was a mere trick of fate that had given rise to the Chain of Garland's wrath. But, magnified by the four forces meant to guide our world, that trick of fate also gave birth to the fiends. Monsters had run rampant as the world sank into darkness. But all that is now past. With the four forces flowing as they were meant, the warriors prepared to cross time and return to the world they knew. A world where Princess Sarah, Queen Jane, and even Garland himself await. When was this fateful day that sent time spiraling into a loop? None can say. It seemed the cycle into which time had fallen would last forever, but the bravery of four young travelers changed that. They took the forces that filled the world with darkness and used them to bathe the world in light. None will ever recall the struggle the four endured, for the breaking of the chain means that it never existed. But within the tales of fantasy that people tell, the memory of their deeds live on. Tales of dwarves and elves, of dragons and shining civilizations that reached for the heavens even as they fell. And now their return is upon us. With the memory of their struggle buried deep in their hearts, they will quietly watch over our world. Remember always that the forces of the world must be used as they were intended, that the power of light must never be used for dark, and that the true crystals reside in your heart. For you are the warrior who crossed time. You are the bringer of light. And so the fantasy comes to a close, but it won't be the final one. Thanks for watching the complete story of Final Fantasy. If you liked the video, don't forget to pack that like button with your beak, because we're birds. And, you know, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, if you stay to the end of this one, don't forget to watch some of our other complete story videos, since you apparently like this one enough to watch it all. And stay tuned as we release more. Until next time, kaka!